we've got so many choices every day and an entire array of things that we can choose. And what's made me feel really good is to choose something that helps the, the most defenseless and the most innocent among us. What helps the children? Well, to arrest their predators and stop the raping, to alert the populace, to alert the American people that I love, that I've served and defended my whole adult life so that would they know the threat against their children so that we can rally around the children and defend them from all sorts of harmful uh, activity, you know, child rape and selling them like objects. It feels good. Even though it's, it's child trafficking is an ugly topic, it feels good to be doing something about it. That's just how I'm wired. That's, that's I think, as humans, that's how we all are wired if we really are honest with ourselves. So I think, yeah, um, it, it's healthy that we, we brought up a, a topic of all this negativity and this attempt to suppress the credible people that are bringing the truth, that are making real effective operations against child trafficking and so forth. Uh, but they're losing. And uh, we all have the chance and the opportunity to choose to take positive action and to ground ourselves on reality and factual evidence. Yeah. And if we do that, uh, life can be pretty darn good, even in crazy times such as this. Very well said, Craig. I have to say that, you know, you've raised an excellent point by making the analogy to President Trump and the way that the news reacts to him. But again, I think you're holding back a bit because there is a stronger analogy between what's happening to President Trump and the very topic we're discussing here today. But it's happening on a much bigger scale. Just like people are making up stories about you saying that you were Hillary Clinton's bodyguard, people are repeating that in our chat. That is not true. You never worked as Hillary Clinton's bodyguard. But we've also got Adam Schiff saying, oh, Donald Trump has committed an impeachable offense. He asked his counterpart yeah. in a foreign country to investigate serious corruption. Adam Schiff would like to socially engineer the people of the United States of America to make you believe the falsehood that he's saying and disbelieve the truth the black and white written in a telephone transcript truth of what Donald Trump actually said. So in the same exact way that the public is being socially engineered against you, Craig, the same tactics are being used to socially engineer the public against President Trump. And I would hope that the people watching our broadcast today who know that what I'm saying about Adam Schiff is accurate will consider that it might also be accurate in the case of Craig Sawyer. Uh, after the Air Marshal Service, I went to go contract for the Department of State through a company called Triple Canopy, a bunch of uh, former Delta Force guys, really great guys, running high threat mobile security for the for, uh, Department of State. Um, I ended up being a senior trainer and an agent in charge for their mobile security in a region of Iraq. Uh, it was Kirkuk region. Wow. And I was in charge of the mobile security for all of the stationed uh, de Department of State personnel, chief of mission personnel, meaning when they went from one town to another, the motorcade, uh, I would I would run and control that, and uh, all the guys answered to me, so I would plan and map that out and and uh, and oversee that. So talking about dozens of guys and numerous vehicles um, running these protective moves. So that was my area of responsibility for all these personnel, right? So you've got dozens of people on the site and you got dozens of people coming and going uh, daily or weekly. And so Hillary Clinton and John McCain did come over for a visit there once for a very short visit. And they showed up with only two Secret Service guys with them. And so they didn't have an, an adequate detail. So technically, they fell under my responsibility for mobile security. Um, so that's that's where that rumor came from. They came, they had their meeting. They left. That's it. I never worked for Hillary. I never worked with her. I never answered to her. Certainly didn't work for her. So he was her bodyguard is a complete falsehood, complete fabrication. It's nothing. I was in reality, I was the agent in charge of a region in Kirkuk. Hundreds of people annually would come and visit. Uh, she came with McCain for a very short visit, for a series of meetings, and then they left. That's it. So mm -hmm. um, I hope people will share this video 
uh, wherever they see that that fake accusation posted and just bring the reality. There are people, there are a lot of diplomats, a lot of uh, special operations heroes and veterans, decorated uh, heroes that were there that know that and know the truth. And so there's your there's your factual evidence and uh, everything else is, is just hateful lies. So there it is. I hope people will actually make use of it this time. <laughs> I appreciate you answering that question head on, Craig. And for me, that's the mark of an honest person. You're asked a question, and no matter how annoying it is, no matter how fake it is, you've got a very sensible answer that hasn't wavered from your answer that you've ever given to that question. 